Suppose we have a basis. And this is any basis for a finite dimensional vector space V. Then any set with more than n vectors is linearly dependent, as we've seen. And any set with less than n vectors does not span V. Now the dimension of a finite dimensional vector space, which is denoted dim V, is the number of vectors being n in a basis for V. Where the dimension of the zero vector space is defined to be zero. So let's look at a few examples. So we'll find the dimension of the vector space Rn so we know that the basis for this vector space has n vectors. So remember that the standard basis for R2 had two vectors. And the standard basis for R3 had three vectors. So these effectively have a dimension of 2 and 3. And therefore the dimension of Rn is n, because the standard basis has n vectors. Now the dimension of the vector space of polynomials with a degree less than or equal to n is equal to n plus 1. So remember the standard basis for Pn had the following vectors, so 1x, x squared, up to x to the n. So we have n plus 1 vectors forming the standard basis. And similarly, the dimension of the vector space of matrices with some number of rows by some number of columns is equal to the rows multiplied by the columns. So if you recall, the vector space of 2 by 2 matrices that we covered had the following standard basis, comprising of the four matrices, that have a single entry of 1. So this vector space would have a dimension of 4. Suppose the vector space V had a dimension being equal to some number of vectors. And suppose S is a set in V with n vectors. So S is a basis for V if and only if one of the following conditions is satisfied. And the first one is that S spans V. And the second condition is S is linearly independent. So for example, suppose we have a set that has the following vectors, 
with the components minus 1, 4 and 3, 3. And we want to determine why this set forms a basis for R2. Well, we know that these vectors can't be expressed as scalar multiples of each other because one of them has a positive and negative component and the other has two positive components. So therefore, given these vectors are linearly independent and we already know the dimension of R2 which is equal to the number of vectors here so we can conclude that these vectors form a basis for R2. So we only needed to verify one of these conditions. If S is a subspace of a finite dimensional vector space being V, then the dimension of the subspace must be less than or equal to the dimension of the vector space. So therefore, S is also a finite dimensional. And the subspace must be equal to the vector space if and only if their dimensions are equal. So this is quite intuitive. We're asked to find the dimension of and a basis for the solution space of the following homogeneous linear system. And we've solved it some time ago using Gaussian elimination and found the following solution, which we wrote in parametric form. Therefore, the solution tuple being the tuple x1, x2, x3 and x4 is equal to some scalar t multiplied by a vector. So here we have x1 is 0, so the first component is 0. x2 is equal to 4t. x3 is minus 5 on 2t and x4 is equal to t. So our basis consists of one vector with the following components. And as we can see, for an arbitrary solution vector, we can express it as a linear combination of the basis vector. So basically just multiplying this vector by a scalar and we can obtain any vector in the solution space. So therefore the set comprising this vector spans the solution space of the homogeneous linear system and therefore the dimension of this solution space is equal to the number of basis vectors, which is 1. So as we can see, we can cover the entire solution space using one vector.